I'm just waking up on the morning of December 26, 2023 to record into my audio recorder some things that I was saying during my sleep. I was speaking the word of God, but it was so, I knew that it was given by the Holy Spirit to explain some things. And so, um, it was beautiful, you know, when you wake up, you can't remember everything that was spoken or that was said, and there's no way, it's kind of like Paul visiting, you know, when he says he was caught up, he knew a man who was caught up the third heaven, and he spoke words that aren't even able to be uttered here. Not that I heard that, but it reminds me of the, the way that they were spoken and what was said. It was the truth. And it was all the Word of God. And it was just from pulling things from, I recognized every word as from the Word of God. And so I just pray that as I try to remember and record these things, that the Lord helps me um, bring them forth. Because they're very, it's so important. It's what, that's what I've been studying as of late. And it, it was like it all just came together. And I don't know if I'm going to post this um, later, if it makes sense. Maybe so. So I'm just going to speak. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to ask the Father to help me speak. In the name of the Word of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God to help me speak the things that I was saying in my sleep. It all woke me up. It was so beautiful. So I just ask you, Father. I was speaking about the enmity that you came. And upon the cross, how did you say it, Father? How was it said? It was slain. The enmity was slain. how you were spoken about from the beginning and how the those who don't believe that say that they believe in God but they don't believe in Jesus Christ or the Lamb of God how how they will come to believe it will be like the one who is grieving after his only son because they will realize how much that they spoke against you and how much they will realize how they convicted um, not convicted but uh, persecuted persecuted those who love you and those whom you love and the fact that you've loved them all along the complications between The people who write and speak ill about the Old Testament and those who speak ill about the New Testament. Even Paul came up in my sleep. How you used his very words to convict them, those who were speaking against him. I believe it was um, scripture out of Galatians and Romans I just wanted to speak off the cuff here, so I'll just speak what I, what I was speaking about in the sleep. I heard, does, does this make the law of none effect? Heaven forbid. No, heaven forbid. Jesus Christ came through the law. The law was written so that we would recognize that we were fallen and that we had sinned, but he came through that very law to redeem us. How could it be done away with? 
The thing that was nailed to the cross was the enmity between God and man, the reconciliation that many, and I heard this in my sleep, want to make the word of God into lasciviousness. Many want to talk about the word of God and use it as a crutch or a tool to be friends with the world and its sin and to continually abide therein. I saw it as someone who lives in the world all week long and then goes to a brick and mortar church house on Sunday morning for an hour to listen to a sermon to make them feel good about where they stand with God only to leave for another week to do the same abominable things but they think if they go in on Sunday morning and whatever denomination or doctrine they're a part of whether they do confessionals or whether they listen to a sermon that's the feel-good self-help um, types type uh, pep rally or whether it's so grace-filled that they have to do nothing to show forth any fruit but just believe all oh, brothers even Satan believes and trembles even Satan believes and trembles and let me tell you he knows that Word of God he knows the Word of God a whole lot better than you do or I do and he will use it against you and he will accuse you and the Word of God will convict the hearts of men if they are willing to read it you will want to be a new creature and follow Christ you will want to pick up your cross and follow Jesus if you read the Word of God if you just go in for a Sunday morning to get a feel-good verse you don't know him at all the Word of God says that he is the Word of God in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God the Word being made flesh and dwelt among us who is that the Word being made flesh and dwelling among us the one whose vesture is dipped in blood in Revelation 19 and his name is called the Word of God do you want to know him he speaks from his very word one of the things I was speaking during my sleep was it was the one side but it was in the spirit speaking against the lie and the other side and it was so beautiful it was so eloquent and well spoken and so perfect and it was all by the Word of God and it was those who were in the spirit speaking against you know saying that Jesus had nailed the commandments and nailed the law to the cross that it was done away with and the Spirit was speaking the Holy Spirit I just know that was giving me the utterance to speak forth the word because I can't do it justice now but it was making the the word and the law of God and his beauty from the beginning and the end he knew the end from the beginning it was making it into sin and lasciviousness it was it was allowing I mean the word lasciviousness was coming up <laughs> and I understood it that he came through the law and fulfilled it but he didn't do away with it does that mean that we have to follow every jot and tittle and I think someone said one time there was 600 and something commandments and then I heard this in the spirit of course not unless your righteousness be greater than that of the Sadducees and Pharisees <laughs> remember that scripture don't know where it is but it's in there type it in you'll find it 
I heard that in my sleep, unless your righteousness be exceed that of the Sadducees and Pharisees. Well, how did he speak about the Sadducees and Pharisees? <laughs> they weren't following the law. He said, you can't even do it yourself. He was pointing to the Redeemer, that they needed a Redeemer. But they refused him. Not that the law was ill and, 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 and done away with and, you know, just like, like it was old and thrown out. Lord, no. But that he came through the law so that we might know that through the law that we were sinners and that we needed a savior. We needed a lamb slain. And he was that lamb. But if his laws were to pass away and be done away with, I actually said this in my sleep, okay? So hear me if you're still with me. Then the sun would no longer move in and out of its course. The moon would not move in and out of its course. The tide would no longer come in and go out. Think about all of his ordinances and his beautiful statues and the things that were spoken about from the beginning, for they would not be. And somewhere in his word it says that his word, that his covenant with man would not be broken unless the sun and the moon would not move in their courses anymore, would not shine anymore. I've spoken that scripture in a lesson before, but um, that we studied. That would be the only thing. So I began to understand that is you have people on one side of one extreme and people on the other. And I was speaking the truth in my sleep, and it was so beautiful. And I was even speaking about the things that Paul said, and you know, the pe the the deeper that people move away from Jesus, if His name is called the Word of God, how could they move away from the Word of God? But those who say, "Well, we want to go back to keeping the law," well. Um, yeah, you can try. But what Jesus was showing me was that he writes it on your heart and your mind. Because you're a new creature in him. You're born again. And that's the only way that you're going to have true works with your faith. I'll show you the works because of my faith. Not works to have works. Can't try to have works. The works just come because you're a new creature because of your faith. And the word says faith without works is dead. Yeah. Because you can claim to have faith and have no works and you're dead too. And you can have works and have no faith and you're just as dead. That's the way the old is with the new. You can't have the New Testament without the Old Testament because he came through it. And you can't have the um, New Testament or the Old Testament without the New Testament because then it wouldn't be fulfilled and you wouldn't have a Savior to redeem you from the law that you couldn't keep in the first place. So he's speaking to from the end of the beginning. He's speaking to those who claim to know him and follow him and keep the law who don't know him because if they knew the father, if they knew the son, then they would know the father. If they knew the father, they would know the son because they are one. There's the father, the word, and the Holy Ghost, and they are one. So if you run around and try to keep the 613 laws and say that you believe in the father and you've got the first five books of the Bible 
memorized, but you don't know the Son, then you have not the Father, and you're still just as lost, trying to keep a law that you can't keep in the first place. You need a Redeemer. You need a Savior. And then, there's the other side. There's those who say, well, we don't believe in the Old Testament and that God who, you know, called all these things to happen. You know why? Because those things happened and death came because of our sin. Not because of the Lord and he was, he's sinless. He came to the law as sin for us to bear our sins as the lamb slain on the altar. But then, then we've got the other side that says we don't believe in that, that God of the Old Testament. It's the same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We just don't understand. And when we don't understand then we try to start throwing things out. Pray for wisdom. And pray for understanding. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We fell. That death became because of our sin. But through that death and all of the similitudes of the things wherein Jesus came through all of that and the explanation of every story, from Abraham, that people don't understand, going up to offer his son Isaac. Of course he wasn't going to offer his son. The Lord was showing us the lamb was for to come. Abraham told his son, the Lord God will provide the lamb. And then he provides a ram? Because the lamb was to come. Why did all those people have to die? Why are so many people dying today? You think it's because God is such a hateful God? Who is the prince of the air? You really need to think about these things. How could the cruelty be coming from all sides, not just one side, in these wars, the cruelty that's taken place, just the utter cruelty that we can't even wrap our hearts and minds around. The Prince of the Air who's con and working in the kings of the earth to bring them to the forefront of what we see today is I believe is the onslaught. The beginnings. Just the beginnings of world war, the final war, if not, if it's not the final war, it's World War Three. We're living it. We're watching it. We're hearing about it. On the four corners of the earth, we're seeing it. And the other side of this equation is grace. But no expectations of changing. Just once saved, always saved. Go down, profess your belief at the altar and change nothing. And just be accepting of the sin. Inviting it in. And being okay with it. That's making the word of God into lasciviousness. And that's what I heard. It was the culmination and the explanation through and through of what it means to speak against the word of God in, in both ways. And we're living in it today. So many want to throw out the words of Paul today. 
only because again they don't understand what Paul was saying it's kind of like seeing a book it is actually seeing the cover blazing through the, its contents you know kind of flipping through and nah nope this isn't right and throwing the book out or someone who says that they believe in the Word of God and I'll accept this book and this book but these I don't agree with them so I'm gonna throw them out you can't read the Bible without the Holy Spirit and you can't read it without his wisdom and his understanding the Lord knows the hearts of man He will carry you through the understanding of the word if you really want it. If you really want to know him, then will you be able to see the things that Paul was speaking about. It begins with, well, for me, in my experience, um, I can tell you based on my experience, I began with the Word of God and the Lord pouring Himself into my heart after He showed me, after He called my name and showed me my sin. And after a series of days of grieving, He came into my heart and I began to walk with Him, and that was almost nine years ago. And I told Him I wanted to know Him. Not just know about him or of him, but I told him I wanted to know him. I heard in my spirit, are you sure? <laughs> kind of scared me, but. I began reading the word of God. I began seeing precious things that I never understood before. And I knew that was him giving me manna from heaven. But then I got off on the wrong track and thought, well, you know, I do want to keep his law. But the more I tried to keep his law, the more I tried to strive to be holy and do it in my own strength and my own might and not by his spirit, the more I failed and the more ashamed I was and the deeper I got into one of the sects of the Hebrew Roots Movement. One, there's many. There are things that I love about the things that they talk about and study, like the feast days and the beauty of those and how the Lord is coming, you know, right through those, fulfilling everyone. It's also a timetable. It's beautiful. And it goes all the way through to the end to the Sabbath to beautiful, beautiful things, but slowly they were getting away from talking about Jesus. I was even told that his name isn't Jesus and I needed to call him something else. Jesus was who saved me <laughs> and that's what I said and I, I tried to fit in. But then I just weeped and weeped and weeped because I I heard through our lessons and stuff them getting further and further and further away from Jesus and really not wanting to talk about him and sometimes maybe but but then talking about you know the third temple and how there were going to be sacrifices again and Oh, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. I, I think I cried for an hour and a half on the way home my last time I was there. And it grieved me so bad. And then those people, not, not the people I was with, because I don't know about them, but different people online that were in the same type of, it's kind of like denominations of Hebrew roots, you know but um, begin speaking against 
palm, speaking against the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pretty soon, speaking against the whole New Testament. <laughs> speaking against Jesus, and then, well, first of all, speaking against Paul and then speaking against Jesus. It's like this road. Um, of legalism that leads you down the road of destruction, literally. You have to be careful because not everybody's wrong and not everybody's right. There's people who keep the Lord's feast and keep the Sabbath day who love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with all their heart. They're just they're wanting to understand the whole of the word, not just half of it. Because if you don't have the whole of it, you're not going to be operating as a whole vessel. Because we serve a whole father. <laughs> Oftentimes it's very hard to explain. It's been a long nine-year journey, and I'm still on it. I, I love the Lord. And to soak in his word every single day. I love his commandments. They are written on my heart and my mind, and I can actually see that. I have been made a new creature, and they are written on my heart and my mind because the Holy Spirit dwells in me, and I would have conviction about certain things. That during this nine years, I have grown. And the Holy Spirit has convicted my heart of the things that grieved him. The things in my life that grieved him. The things that needed to change. Yes, I was made a new creature. But the things that needed to change. The growth, like a child being reared up by her father. And then realizing, looking around you and realizing what's in the earth. The beast that stretched out over the four corners of the earth. Realizing things in the spirit about who Israel is. Where is she? Then realizing who the harlot is. And seeing things in a whole new way. The Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled, fulfilled what he nailed to the cross was the enmity that was spoken from the very beginning of the fall of man. Because of who? Satan. The enmity was slain. But I, just like David says, I love his ordinances and his statutes. You know, I really enjoy seeing the sun come up every morning. That's an ordinance. The statutes. Standing on the, the, um, the shore of the ocean and watching the tide go in and go out the way the world works the seasons the explanation of the seasons where we can see our own our own earth our own life through it the fall think about it the fall the fall of man the fall where everything begins to die the leaves begin to change and fall to the ground. Think about this in the spiritual, okay? Then the winter winter comes. It's treacherous. It's ice. It's snow. Frozen ground. Cloudy days. Pain. Darkness. And then after the winter, 
come spring, the planting of the harvest, the sun shining, the new life springing forth, the greenery, the flowers, the food, the vegetables, and then summer, the harvest. Look at our lives. Look at the season, whatever season you're in in your life. Whatever season the earth is in. What season we are in regarding the whole of time. Did you know that the sun goes in its course 364 days a year? The moon goes in its course in and out 354 days a year. You know what's interesting about that that I found? That out of 2,520 years, years, because we, we look at 2,520 days being seven years, right? But 2,520 years, there happens to be seven extra years in the course of the sun versus the course of the moon. 2,520 days. Well, you can see that for yourself. If you look it up, all you have to do is take 2,520 years times 364 and then 2,520 years times 354. is a difference of 25,200 days and divide that by 360. I'm sorry, it's not seven, it's 70. <laughs> it's 70. I hadn't looked at that in a while, so just came up in, in this. The Lord knows and controls all the time and the things that happen within a certain time. That 70 years is within that 2,520 years, so perfectly, to the day. So I think about the things that the Lord asked Job when we don't understand the word or we don't understand something. And the Lord asked Job, you know, did you set the sun and moon in their course? And I'm paraphrasing. Did you cause the tide to come in and out? Did you met out the sands of the sea in the palm of your hands or the waters? Can you imagine? So before you think to listen to anyone who wants to throw out any portion of the word of God, say to yourself, I may not understand and pray. The Lord said, ask and you shall receive. And ask for wisdom. And him who gives it and abraves not. He doesn't hold back. When there is an earnest heart, wanting wisdom and wanting to understand. And you really want to know him. Not just know about him or of him. He will begin to teach you so many things. I'm still learning. I'll be ever learning. But I find more and more every day that his, his word and who he is, his name is called the word of God, becomes more and more beautiful and intricate. And the beauty of it is something I never knew before, before he came into my heart. It was that book that I examined the cover of and flipped through and didn't understand it and put it down. He can't come to know him without his word. So I guess maybe I'll post this, I don't know. If I do, then Lord bless you all in Jesus' name.